Welcome to another PL Together Lounge Talk. I'm Adam Geller, founder and CEO. Today, we are joined by Jim Knight. He is the author of many books, uh, but most recently, the book, The Definitive Guide to Instructional Coaching. And Jim, we are here today. We've talked multiple times. I'm so glad to, to connect again and, and see you again. It's good to see you, and I'm grateful for you holding up the book. So that's great. Yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, that for for writing it. It, it got me, it gave me a lot to think about. Mm. Um, and you know, I think for today, I really want to kind of start at the top, asking you a question that it turns out I think a lot of the people that are out there looking for your research are asking: What is the Jim Knight Coaching Model? So first off, we have a website, instructionalcoaching.com, and there are over 350 resources you can download, uh, just tons of stuff you can get. So there's uh, lots of ways to answer the question there. But let me um, put it this way. If you imagine four circles in a Venn diagram, one circle is the beliefs, one circle is the coaching uh, cycle, one, coach, one circle is coaching skills, and one circle is strategic knowledge. So the beliefs, we would say, if you look at the literature on motivation and uh, interaction with people and what helps uh, professionals develop, we argue for what's called the partnership approach, what we call partnership principles. So our set of beliefs are simply put that we see coaching as a conversation between equals, two partners. I've articulated in a series of principles I studied it with my dissertation, and I found that when we took the partnership approach versus a directive approach, people were four and a half times more likely to, to plan to implement what they'd learned. Then the second thing is the coaching cycle. And the coaching cycle we use is what's called the impact cycle. And so the impact cycle is kind of the manifestation of those beliefs. What does it look like when you live out those beliefs in action? And... Um, so the impact cycle is about, has three parts, identify, learn, and improve. There are three stages, and then there are steps within the stages. So in the identify stage, the purpose of the identify stage is to have the teacher identify a goal they really want to hit. And so we do that by getting a clear picture of current reality first, then asking a variety of questions to help the teacher identify a goal, a goal that matters to them, ideally a student-focused goal. And then once you've got a goal, you have to figure out how you're going to get there. So you need to identify strategies to help you hit the goal, a change in the way you teach or a change in the way in which kids interact that'll help you hit the goal. That's at the end of the learning stage, teacher has a goal, a goal they care about, they really want to hit. Second part is in the learning stage, you get, help the teacher get ready to implement. And so that means you describe the practice clearly, but you also say to the teacher, you may want to change it. Let's go through it and do it the way you want to do it. Since you have a goal, um, the goal will keep you honest, so to speak, because you're not gonna hit the goal if you implement it in a, in a weak way and or an in, ineffective way. And then the teacher gets to see it. Maybe the uh, coach goes in the classroom and models it. Maybe they watch another teacher, maybe they watch a video, but they, they get to see the practice. At the end of the learning stage, the teacher is ready to go. They say, well, I've got it, I'm gonna do it. I know what my goal is, I have my strategy, I'm ready to implement. Then you go to improve, and in the improvement stage, usually what happens is the strategy doesn't work. And so the teacher has to make modifications and adaptations. And the coach sits down with the teacher and says, well, do we need to change the way we teach the strategy? Or do we have the wrong strategy? Or is our goal the wrong goal? Or are we gathering data in the wrong way? And they keep making modifications until they hit the goal. And what distinguishes that strategy, that approach from other models of coaching, there's two things. One of them is, that the teacher is the one making the decisions. The coach isn't showing up and saying, here's the things you did right, and here's the things you did wrong, and here's what you need to do. We think that directive approach goes against what we know about professionalism and research on human motivation. And so we think it starts with the teacher. And the second thing is that we don't show up and say, here's a strategy you need to do. Uh, training's been done, we're gonna do a workshop. Now you go implement the strategy. We start with the teacher's deep commitment to kids and what they want to see change in kids. And so that we say, okay, so what are you, what's not happening with your kids that you want to have happen? Well, there's this thing I want to do. And then, okay, well, let's look at the strategies and see which one fits. And we feel, I mean, if there's one thing I would want to say is there's one thing we really want to promote. It's the idea that real learning starts with the concern 
concern of the person. It's not something forced from the outside. It starts from the inside. So we say learning is inside out, not outside in. And too often professional development isn't as successful because it's trying to get teachers to do something and they can't see the relevance of it. We start with relevance and then we figure out what strategy can we use to hit there. So that's the second circle, the cycle. We've got first off the set of beliefs. Uh, we position ourselves as teachers working with teachers. Uh, second thing is that we have this cycle that puts the teacher at the heart of the matter. Third thing is the coaching skills. And so we believe that listening and questioning are to coaching like skating is to ice hockey. You can't play unless you can do those things. And so talk a lot about how to listen and question effectively. Also, how to engage in a dialogical conversation. And then those three things, the beliefs, the coaching cycle, and listening and questioning, coaching skills, are pretty universal. Most coaching programs have something like that, although their beliefs may be different. But what makes instructional coaching different is that the coach also has strategic knowledge. And in particular, the coach understands how to gather data so the teacher can identify a goal and monitor progress towards the goal. And the coach has a deep knowledge of effective teaching practices, which they can share to help the teacher hit the goals. And, um, and what makes instructional coaching different is that expertise that the coach has. But the, the coach is, doesn't act like an expert. They act like a partner, but they have expertise. And so when it becomes a time when like the teacher says, gee, I wonder what I should do here, the coach can say, is it all right with you if I share some possibilities and see what you think? I think our approach to coaching, we call that a dialogical approach, but that's what makes us distinct is we really believe in the power of expertise. We think it's been done wrong though. We think data, for example, um, tends to be too infrequently gathered. We think it should be gathered every week. And we think data when it's gathered correctly should build hope because it helps you identify where you wanna go and agency because you can see progress, you can see yourself growing. So data should foster hope and it should foster agency. And then the teaching strategies, um, it's not about the strategy, it's about the change in students. And the standard for excellence for teaching strategies should be changes in kids' well-being, changes in kids' learning. It shouldn't be, oh, I've checked everything off on the checklist and I can do this strategy. So that's a lot of, a lot of it, but four circles. It's education, we need a Venn diagram, so beliefs, coaching model, uh, communication skills, strategic knowledge. Those are the, the big parts of our, our model. Well, I, uh, thank you. That was, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a big open-ended question, you know, and, and <laughs> asking you to, to summarize, uh, you know, in essence, the, the body of your work. Uh, but I, I really like that, you know, the, the Venn diagram is helpful, right? Because I think what's powerful about that is it's inherently described as the intersection uh, between all of those things together. Uh, that's for me, what I, I was hearing you say is, is the intersection of, of those four big ideas um, that uh, really is, as, as I asked, the, the gym night coaching model. <laughs> mm. Well, there's a lot of us who've created it, but it's, I'd say yeah. maybe it's the instructional coaching group coaching model. Fair, I'll go fair. With that. A, 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 a large and, and, and very experienced team in, in, in the instructional coaching group. Uh, well, lots of things for us to continue talking about there, uh, but we're going to take a short break. If you're curious what I'm going to ask Jim next, make sure to watch the continuation of this interview, as well as many more on pltogether.org. Jim, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs> 